So first song is Karen Dalton, um, Something on My Mind. Yesterday, any way you made it was just fine. I remember focusing more on the, um, on the feeling than the, than the lyrics, because her voice is so heartbreaking. <laughs> Every, every time, every time um, you play her music, someone goes, who's, who's this? If you, have, if you haven't heard it, you go, who is this? No one else has a voice like her. Crackly and hoarse and yeah, just so, so damaged and so vulnerable. And I guess in a, a weird way, where kind of people are attracted to that part of a songwriter or, or a musician or a singer. It's kind of weird. <laughs> so, yeah, this song is Abner J, I'm So Depressed. I only heard this song the other week. My friend um, Darren Hanlon, he's a songwriter, he um, stayed at our place. He had this big stack of records with him which he'd bought when he, was, um, when he was in Portland. And he was like, you've got to listen to this one, Abner, this guy Abner J. We had nothing, we had nothing. The music is just so, so atmospheric, kind of, or you, like you feel like you're kind of in the room. You kind of just hear everything, him tapping his feet, him making mistakes, and I don't know, there's something, there's something really real about it. There's no, no bullshit. <laughs> He started his own record label um, and he put out his music through that. At gigs, he was like, buy my record, it'll be worth a lot of money one day. Oh, when I'm dead. <laughs> I'm a boy, so full of love. I have no one to hold my hand. Uh, this is Roland S. Howard, Exit Everything. I think when I started listening to Nick Cave and then started kind of, you know, researching out of all the other bands and, and I really loved um, that song Shivers that the birthday party did and then I found out that Roland S. Howard wrote it and then there's the version of it in uh, Dogs in Space. And I just think that's such a great song. So I, I totally fell in love with, with that song. And then, um, and then I bought Pop Crimes. And then I bought Ten Inch Snuff Film. Um, so really, I just picked a song. Exit Everything's a great song, but I love kind of every, like, I love those two records. It's got an amazing kind of, the groove, the, ba the bass groove, and uh, it's kind of entrancing. <laughs> I reckon it kind of inspired my guitar playing probably a lot and just kind of just focusing on, on energy instead of focusing on, you know, singing really perfectly or playing every note perfectly. More about just uh, kind of harnessing the the, the essence of whatever the song or the or the room or whatever. So yeah, I think it was pretty important for me for that that kind of stuff.
Yeah, so this is uh, Free Money, Patti Smith. When I moved to Melbourne, um, when I was 20, I, um, I remember buying horses on CD. And again, a, a bit of a like musical late bloomer, but it was the first time I'd kind of listened, uh, listened to it. And I started reading it on the walk home, and I remember I started crying in the introduction, just like the, <laughs> the, very, the very first bit. You know, and then from then on, I was kind of, I was in love with Patti Smith. There was an instant kind of connection with her music and her, just her, the, you know, the, the way she talks, the, the, the way she uses words and, and the way she kind of doesn't hold back, uh, you know, her vulnerabilities at all. Like she's quite um, open and uh, revealing, um, which is refreshing. The first kind of thought of it is the, the energy. I mean, that whole album has pretty live energy and it feels like, a lot, a lot of her stuff kind of feels like it's, it's on the edge and, and, and um, yeah, it kind of, it does, it kind of has that slow build and then it feels like she's kind of, almost feels like she's making it up on the spot and then she gets on a roll and it's like, oh, don't, you know, I hope she doesn't run out of things to say. <laughs> Mickey and Sylvia, Love is Strange. I first heard this song when um, I went on my very first holiday overseas to New Zealand. I was driving around and my, me and my girlfriend at the time, we bought a CD each at the petrol station. I bought Nick Cave, Dig Lazarus Dig, and she bought the Dirty Dancing soundtrack. And uh, so we had those two CDs for 10 days on repeat. And, uh, and that's the first time I heard this song. You're in an awful fix. Many people. It's, uh, it makes me smile every time I listen to it. Like the, the little, the bit, the, the talky bit in the middle. It's just kind of, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just funny. Sylvia. Yes, Mickey. How you call your lover boy? Come here, lover boy. And if he doesn't answer? Oh, lover boy. And if he still doesn't answer? I simply say. It's so it's so simple. Even the the recording is quite simple, and you know things kind of stick out in some bits. Technically, they they probably shouldn't. Like I think like the, the cowbell comes in and it's like, you, when you listen to it, you, you feel the kind of grainy, grittiness of the, um, I don't know, the time, I guess, the equipment and the, um, you just kind of imagine, I, I imagine what kind of studio, you know, would have been at and, and what it would have been like. <laughs> oh, baby, my sweet baby. Baby, uh, Taking dance lessons? I could teach a kid. Uh, so this is Total Control, Flesh War. It's, it's this band that's kind of made up of members from lots of different bands, kind of like punk and electronic. This is almost a combination of the, of the two. The lyrics are really, even though they're, they're dark and kind of scary, but they're really um, poetic.
you know, when you listen to music sometimes and you just kind of drift away or it's like background music or this is kind of, it, it really struck me because it was like, yeah, <laughs> making me feel something. <laughs>